Are we live? <laughs> no countdown this time. I'm having a little bit of fun. So you guys, um, welcome. My name is Candice. I'm here at the Passionate Home in downtown Langley, BC, and it's glorious outside. It's very, very warm, and I'm going to be like super rosy by the end because we're in a tight little space, um, but it's lots of fun, and we're happy to be here. So today on our live, we are going to be making something beautiful so we are it's unusual so not everyone's gonna have this particular piece at home but what I'm showing you you can put on anything so we're just gonna take something random that you might have at home that needs a refresh and beautify it and so we are going to be taking it's kind of beautiful just as it is this um, mounted antlers and we're going to mount it again Carrie can you yeah see that board so this is just old bar barn no it's not it's fence, it's fence boards, boards that we've just connected together and and uh, so we're gonna have some fun with this um, I'm gonna set that one aside because we're gonna start on on this piece first so what we're using today we are going to be using molds um, so the Juliet mold is going to be the the main one and we may use just a tiny piece of Dainty Flourishes. We'll see if we get to that one or not. Um, we are using air dry clay, Iron Orchid Designs. I happen to have a little butterfly in my stash that was made with the resin ages ago. And um, we're going to be using this little guy. And he's from, I think it's just called Butterflies. Alrighty, from a mold there. Have I have a stash. Whenever I'm pouring resin, I don't know if you guys do this, but if I have any extra, I just keep pouring and then I hold it because I can re, uh, if I wanted to re-manipulate this, I just heat it up with a heat gun and I can adjust it. But I already molded this in a cup. That's what I did to keep the shape. So anyway, I digress. All right. So we are also going to be using some paint inlays um, from the melange, some little bits of the roses. And so to get my theme, roses, roses. It's gonna be beautiful. Alrighty, so we're gonna set that one aside. And then I have a tiny little piece of transfer. I think it's from the catalog, the small one um, last year's, last, last, last ones. Anyway, this is in my stash too. All these little bits that haven't been used, don't throw anything away. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, I have already cut out the pieces that I wanna use um, from the paint inlay. So I love the base of this. So I don't wanna put paint over it and, and get rid of this old chippiness because I think it's quite beautiful. So I'm going to just use a clear lacquer, a matte lacquer into this, and I'm going to lay my inlay into that. So we're gonna start there. So I've sort of laid it out, I think I wanted it there. I'm just gonna bring this little dude back for a second because I wanna make sure that it's coming out from behind so that's sort of where I'm going to place them. I can't remember which, I think this is going to come like here. Did people know you could do this into lacquer? I don't know. You can. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Alrighty, so I am just going to, so I know this is about three fingers up. This one's going here, this one's over here. We'll start with this little piece here. So I'm just going to go into my lacquer. You can use whatever it is that you have. Because this board is so rough, I'm really going to make sure that I have a good buildup on there. So it's not just a super thin layer. I want a fairly good layer on there. All right, so while it's wet, again, I'm putting the image side down. I want that grid to be looking up at me. And I'm just going to add this one here. Oops, don't wiggle it like that, just set it on. So, because again, it's in this very um, craggy wood, if you will, I'm going to make sure that I brayer it, textured, thank you. And then this is a very um, stiff brush, and again, I'm just gonna pounce that right into all those details, all those little crevices, all right? And then I'm gonna spritz it with a wee bit of water, and again, I'm just going to push it in there because I really want to make sure that it has good contact. All right, there we go. So now we're just going to keep moving on. Have people done this in the lacquer before? Have you used the inlays before? This is actually, if you have not used an inlay yet and you're sort of on the fence, you want to try it, it's a little bit of um, 
you know, a learning curve, but once you do it, they're so amazing. So, but this melange is just such a great one. I want to show you the back, show you all that's in it. So if you haven't started, look at that eight pages of gloriousness and look at how many smalls are in there. And you can just, you, there are so many options. Start with something small and uh, give it a try because the truth is you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Okay. So making sure they've got some good coverage on here, going both directions. I want it to go into there a wee bit and actually over a wee bit. There we go. Again, just pushing it right in where it needs to go. Have you ever done this on such a rough surface before? Um, so I hadn't. Um, and so I did do um, a little practice on just a little wood cutoff that I had at home. And I used one of the pieces and um and i love it it was so pretty i'm gonna wet it there really make sure all of this gets in and here's the thing is this is super chippy anyway i don't mind if it doesn't come out perfectly pristine because look at the rest of the board mm -hmm. just gonna match the board yeah. right so i'm not going for perfection oops that's lisa says she bit. has the chateau in her storage cupboard for a couple of months uh and she's pondered whether she should use it. The chateau. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. I have that one too. It's so pretty. I, I have all of them. <laughs> I, I have a problem. <laughs> I like pretty things. <laughs> but you know what? I get to play at work here, so it's all good. No complaints, right? All right, so again, just making sure that's right into all of those it's details. Lots of new watchers. Oh, fabulous. Where are people watching from? I always love finding out. Okay, we're going up to the upper corner up here. There we go. I'm just making sure that the whole board has a little bit of this coverage, just so that when it's done, it all will, um, it'll just tie together. It won't look like there's some gloss or, even though this is a matte, it has a little bit of sheen to it. So I do wanna make sure that the whole thing has been unified. Okay, make sure I'm going the right way. Again, those those lines, the grid on the top is looking up at me. Laura is from the Sahara Mountains in California. Oh wow, and I'm oh, Lori, sorry. Lori. And Lori, I'm complaining about the heat here. <laughs> I'm guessing yours is a little bit warmer, but you know, we love it. We complain, but really we love it, don't we? All right, so again, right inside of there. And you guys, I'm so excited to see this all come together. It's one of the ones, so most times when I do a live, I try to do one ahead of time. So I know exactly what I'm doing. But of course, we only had one of these beautiful, beautiful North deer Alabama, heads. Another watcher, I think oh, it's Amanda. Amanda, thanks, Amanda. Thanks, guys, for watching. We always love it. People around the world, it's quite it's the like community. In stormy UK. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, you know, I love a good storm. I love a good thunderstorm. I don't know. My daughter got, got that from me. She's like, loves, loves, loves rain. And she's moved to Alberta and Edmonton and they don't get a ton of rain. So they get, right? I mean, to be fair, they don't get much rain. <laughs> so most of us love that, but she, she loves it. Her heart is there. She's got a lovely young man. And it's um, super humid in Ireland. Oh, wow. Yeah, we have a few that watch from Ireland on the regular. All right, so here we go. Just getting all of those details in. And again, pushing it in. I know, right? So I am doing this in lacquer. So that means I'm not waiting for it to be fully, fully dry. If I was doing this in a chalk style paint that doesn't have polymers in it, I can let it dry, walk away, and come back in three weeks and wet it and peel it off and not have a problem. Depending on your lacquer or your paint, give, it, give a little test with a little piece because everyone's going to be different. If it has polymers in there, so the sealer's in there, um, chances are you don't want to fully let it dry because you may not get that paper off. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside. I think it looks pretty good. Did I spray that one? I can't remember. So let's just double check. It does look like it. 
Alrighty. So this is going to set aside for a minute. But look at how it's coming, right? What type of lacquer do you use? So I did a um, Annie Sloan matte lacquer because that's what I have at my fingertips at the moment. So I'm going to set that one aside there. And now we're going to work on this beauty. So pretty. All right. So my vision is to actually just leave this fairly plain. And we're going to work on this section here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get here. I'll let it face you guys for now while I'm getting ready. I'm going to use my Juliet mold. So Juliet mold is one big mold. So the whole thing is solid. It's got all these little connections. Um, it is focus. definitely a little bit trickier to do the whole thing because often when you're doing a small little piece, you just have enough clay to fill that little cavity, right? Um, but when you're doing this, so I'm not going to try and roll it out and fit it perfectly. I'm going to piece it together. Um, the other thing is I don't actually need the whole mold. So I need about a half of it. And I can always add to it. That's the beautiful thing too. Layer, layer, layer. Especially when you're using the clay, you can just mold it over the last layer, right? And add pieces where you need it. So, first thing I'm going to do, of course, is to cornstarch this because I you do not. From Ireland says she. This is the first time she's seen you live. And she's oh, yay! Thanks for watching. I go live every month, the second Tuesday of the month at one o'clock. Just so you know. <laughs> for future. All right, so here we go. I'm going to dust these with cornstarch. Do you guys want to see a sneak peek of what it's going to look like in the end? Should I show you a sneak peek? So I um, did a little something last night because I always, you know, if I'm not here playing, I'm at home playing, and I always want to make sure that I'm well prepped before I come and do a live so that you guys get the best of me, experience. I guess. The best experience. There we go. That's exactly. So I have a number of these little tins at home. Uh, you can get them anywhere. Super inexpensive. And I turned it into this. Look at how pretty is this. So this is the Juliet mold that we're using today. So I'm going to be doing something very similar to this, but because it will still be very soft, I thought I'd do one and I'll show you how I'm going to wax it at the end on this one, which will give you the final look on the other one, but at least um, you'll have an opportunity to see it completed. Hello, Catherine from Australia. Hi, Catherine. All right. Oh, so, so pretty. Oh, so uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to set that aside. I almost dumped the glass of water when the girl's at downstairs. She was handing me something, and I went to grab it with my cup of water. It was not good. She almost had a head full of water. All right, so I know that I need a fair amount of this. Okay, so this is the air dry clay. Again, I always tell people it will dry out if you leave it in the air. So I, um, I use that press and seal, press and seal cling wrap. So it actually sticks to itself. It has a light tack to it. And then I know that uh, it's not going to dry out. All right. So I'm just going to warm it up a little bit in my hands. You don't need to overwork this. The, I find that the uh, Iron Orchid uh, air dry clay, it's an artist grade clay. So it really, is, it's easy to work with. Easy, easy. I see you squinting. <laughs> okay. I have some. I'm just going to get started here, start piecing it together. So again, I'm just pushing it in, rubbing off the excess um, to move it around. When I did mine at home, I did pop it in the freezer um, because it has so many little moving parts. And then the whole thing came out as one solid, nice little popped right out so easily. Are you putting it on as one piece? Or separate pieces? Um, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Da -da -da. Hang da -da. in there, people. So, what when I did um, the little piece behind me that I just showed you, mm -hmm. oops, that's part of it, I um, it was solid, right? Because I, I froze it. And then when I took it out, I was able to look at what I wanted and then just break off. So, this is a, a piece that I broke off and added here and some little bits. 
so the leaves here, so I could manipulate it where I wanted. And you'll be able to see in this, when I do pop it out, um, I can keep it solid. And certainly if you had poured resin, it would be one solid piece, right? Because they are all connected. Every bit is connected. So Fiona's saying she's looked everywhere in Ireland and can't find IOD, so we'll just have to oh, have her look. Right? Maybe so, can you answer her after the show? Yeah, but yeah. but really what you want to do is go on to ironorchiddesigns.com and, um, and look for a stockist, a supplier, right? And um, I know that it's not everywhere. So tell people in Ireland to get on it so mm -hmm. that you can, or you get on it. <laughs> there you go. Because the truth is that everywhere around the world is loving these. And, but I do know there are certain places that Well, the it's molds harder. are multi-user, like you said, the clay, oh. the yeah. um, chocolate cookies. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe for today, we might just see where this brings us. So I'm going to use my brayer on here because again, it's such a big space. I wanna make sure it's all the way into all those details. And then I'm gonna use my thumb to, maybe I'll get some more over there, to work off some of the excess. Okay, so the other thing I can use is when you get your transfer packet, you're gonna get one of these little tools in it. And I like to hold the majority and then using this micro rim that's here, there's this little rim, if I just on an angle push against it, there you go, you can see I'm getting this beautiful clean edge now. And if some of it pops out, I'll just shove it back in. Super user friendly, right? I'm working from the inside out. In some places I probably have way too much clay, but you know, whoops. Push that back in. There we go. Your green nails match today, right? They get, I get them redone tomorrow. Oh. This one has been opened a few times, so it's a wee bit drier than normal. Oops. Maybe I'll just use my thumb here. There we go. Finding those edges, working it off. Mm, and all. Says she's bought this mold recently but was afraid to try it. Oh, just try it. And I know it's definitely a little bit trickier because it's so, so big. big. Yeah. Right? But here's the other side of it. Practice, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's going to go wrong? It doesn't work. Pop it out and try again. Right? So that one there looks like it goes in and there's a little space there. And 100%, um, if you're new to trying it, pop it in the freezer. It really does, it's kind of a game changer. For how long would you put in the freezer? 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, not even. Walk upstairs, grab a coffee, grab a tea, come back. Yep. Or you know, just make something else in the interim. Okay, so again, I'm going to roll it. Just to make sure I have a nice flat back. And you're gonna find there's these little bits in here. They'll just pop out later. So we don't want to get this too dry. All right, so here we go. Here's the magic. So when you're unmolding, you wanna flip it over. You wanna roll it back, pushing from the back. Oh, you make it look so easy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I have cornstarch, so it is easy. Oh, I Beautiful. lost one of these, but it doesn't matter. All right, so let's have a look at where that's going to. So here again, right, if a piece breaks off, I'm not too worried. I can piece it together how I want it. So let me see, I think I'm going to remove this one. Just like that. 
I can just mold it how I want it. It's almost like you're decorating a cake. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think I'm liking that. I'm liking this one here. I'm going to get rid of There's a tiny little piece at the back. I actually even like that going up over the antlers. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful when I paint that one to not get paint on my antler. But, and then I think, I think that might just be the magic right there. What do you think? What are you thinking? More? I love it. It almost looks like two eyes in a way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it does. Should it. should I add a few more or is that good? What are I, people thinking? I don't know. How are we for time? <laughs> always the time. Why don't crunch. we start with that? Let's start with that. Because you can always add to it after. Absolutely. And glue on top. But yeah. that positioning looks really great. Okay. So now we're going to see if we can reposition it the okay. same way. So basically I'm using a thick white glue that's going to dry clear. Um, having said that, on this particular piece, I'm going to paint the whole thing. So once it's glued on, I'm just going to paint the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to cover that anyway. Um, I do like painting the molds while they're fresh, although you do have to be um, gentle because I don't want to put a lot of pressure, a lot of digging into these because they're so fresh. And I'll probably, once they're glued on, just give them a little hit with the blow dryer just to give them a wee crest on the top. Looking good, everyone's saying. Okay, so I am actually going to separate this and then glue it down in pieces because I think, oh, and here we go. I even tested the glue before I came up because remember last time I had a glue, a glue issue, a glue fiasco. All right, so I put the glue in the center of my piece and I'm working it all the way out to the edges so that it will lay nice and flat. And I think, oh, now I forget how it was. It was this one, there we go. There's our leaf, joining our leaf. There we go. And I'm gently making sure that all those edges are touching. This is the next one we're gonna go with. Looks like you're decorating. <laughs> <laughs> Funky music going on. Okay, and this was, I think this way. And again, there's no right or wrong way. Just get her on there. All right, look at all the detail in all this though. I mean, it's so beautiful. And this one here, we're gonna detach there. There we go. Stone Flower Design Studios is watching. Hmm. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. Stone Flower Design. So what do you do, Stone Flower Designs? Do you do IOD? Are you part of the the um, um, IOD design? Yeah, the fam. fam jam. Tribe. Yeah. Yeah. So many, many talented people. Okay. Hmm. There we go. In this, um, I have to think. No, it was this way, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There we go, somehow, somehow like this. I think this was higher up, much higher up because that's gonna connect to there. So I'm just manipulating it. I'm not too worried that I have, um, you know, as I'm sliding it up some glue because again, I'm going to paint over top of all of that. There we go. Again, just getting those little edges down and we have our last little piece up here that we're going to glue as well. Oops, that little piece is coming off. All right. Mm, a little bit more. Oh my word. There's a little clump in there somehow. There we go. All right. It's toasty in here. So, you wanna hear some news? I had my babies over. I had my, all my family was in from Alberta this last, uh, a week ago. And um, it was just so exciting. I have two grandbabies, um, one that we've adopted. Well, we, our family, you know, my <laughs> son and daughter-in-law. Um, <laughs> and, um, but really the truth is that we, we've adopted, right? Uh, no, I wanted that little one going over the, the antlers a wee bit. 
Um, so they were all in town for a visit, and it was just so lovely. And we got a new family photo done because we have everyone in it. And my one of my youngest daughter's boyfriend was up, and we're pretty sure that's going to be going somewhere. So, so it's fun to get everyone together and have a family photo done. And you know, I sit there and I look at it, and I just think, how blessed am I? Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Six amazing kids, two grandbabies, and actually, they told us they they would like to adopt again. So, even though they can have babies, they still want to adopt again. So we're super excited about that. And um, you know, once you put your paperwork in, it's just kind of a waiting game. So I could find out any day that I'm gonna be a grandma again. <laughs> Best day ever, right? All right. So I'm loving how that's looking. And now we're gonna get some color on it. Okay. So, yeah, Oof, it's toasty up here. All right, so I'm wondering if we need to just check on this for a second. Mm. I'm just going to come in and check that one little piece up here. It's still fairly wet, um, but I just want to check on it. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, she, Sandy says it's freezing on her. Oh, I'm sorry, but, Sandy. Um, Everything shows okay here, so. Is it freezing on anyone? Oh, look, okay, so come and see. We're ready to pull this. Look at that. Ooh. Beautiful. So, these can be reused. So we don't throw them away even after the lacquer. Now, it might be different in each person's lacquer, but try a little piece and try it. Okay, so here we go. I always think this is kind of like the money, right? When you. Yes, for sure. So when you're going to lacquer, I do try and get the whole thing that's been in um, that's attached wet so that it will peel off I want to do it backwards so that they can see better ready mm -hmm. magical oops so wow, pretty beautiful. so it just kind of adds to that whole um, chippiness of the wood to start with right a little bit of water. I might might miss myself in a minute. Okay. Okay, let's start over here. Did you miss that one? I did, but maybe not. Nope, not quite wet enough. Yeah, so if you don't wet it enough, it's going to stick. All right. And leave it for like 30 seconds. See, I'm starting too soon. I'm going to have to start over here. There we go. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one here. Maybe. Maybe. It looks amazing. I missed the start. I'll have to look back. I've never seen this before. Oh. oh, this is a paint inlay, and we are doing it right into lacquer. So, oops, not enough wet in there. So, we didn't let it fully dry um, because we want to make sure that we can get the paper off, which is, I'm having a wee trouble on this one, but here we go, okay? Beautiful. There you go. And I love how it's all, we've kept the integrity of that wood because it's chippy and beautiful, and so mm -hmm. that's what I wanted. That was mm -hmm. the vision we were going for there. All right, I better get this one in water, though. All right, so we're going to tuck this aside so it's out of the way and I don't make a mess. This one can get out of the way. Okay, so this is ready to, those are just going to dry over there. I'm going to out of the way. Here we go. There. All right, so now we're coming back to this, and we're just going to be adding some color here. So I'm just going to put a number of, ooh, that one's <laughs> quite runny. That was frightening. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oop, a little squish. I am just putting a number of colors together, and I am going to just play with them. So I want a nice soft brush. And I might end up with this one. This one here is like the dregs. So we're just going to go here. And I'm not going to use a lot of paint 
I'm going to add some water to make sure I can get it into all of the details. And um, where's my water? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So uh, because it's so warm in here, this already has a crust. So I'm not even worried about that at all. We're going to go for it. So I'm going to just get some water on my palette here. I almost got the, the camera. And I'm just going to pick some of these colors and I'm just going to get started. And I'm just tapping it in. And I'm not even worrying about anything. I just want to make sure that everything, if I get it on here, I'll just wipe it off later. Everything has a coat of some paint. Where did and you get your mounted antlers? <laughs> Carrie's had them forever, I think. <laughs> my wall. Oh yeah, they were in the wall in Carrie's office here. And we're like, ah, it's time for, it's time for something. A re -zhuzh. But you know what? You could do this with anything. Whatever you have. Um, right? It, it, yeah. You can hit up some thrift stores or antique stores. Oh, totally. If you wanted. Yeah. The other thing that, you see this shape here? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you can find, um, it's, it's for holding um, tiny little spoons. And it sort of has that shape. And then just um, pop those off and then paint it, right? And it looks like that. And then you could create your own. Or a tro an old trophy. An old trophy, yeah. yeah. So I did, um, I made Janine a family crest on one of those once upon a time. Just because I was playing, you know, it's what I do. All right, so getting this in here and gonna have to definitely clean that up later but you're getting the picture right so I'm making sure to water down my paint a little bit because I do find that there's so many little facets in these right and so I'm getting into all of those little creases and things Oops. there we go you could actually go and buy the an antler head from Anywhere. Home decor store. Totally. And do this. Yep. Yeah. It's like the one up here, right? Mm -hmm. There's this, do you see this one up here? It's a little one, but you could still just throw some little roses on there or whatever and make it yours and unique, right? So it doesn't look like it came from a big box store. Make it your own unique piece. Look at how pretty it looks just like that without even much detail going on or much, um, you know, paint detail going on. It's just pretty. Well, and it's the layer of color that's going to make it come alive. It is totally. Yeah. yeah. You always have to wait to the end to see it come together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's got the majority of my base color. I'm just going to give this a quick little wipe under here. I might need to come in with some white paint later, but... What about this little piece here? Do you want to do that? Oh, yeah. I do. There you go. There. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. And until this is sealed, I can come back and clean it up. So I'm not too worried about some of the areas that I didn't want to get hit with paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a detail brush. I still have my colors here. I'm going to add a little bit of a hot pink. Um, you know, shocking. Shocking! And um, I'm actually just going to, I need like nothing. Okay? That's going to do it. Super concentrated. Um, and so I'm just going to use water. Water is going to be my friend here. There we go. My water bottles have an attitude. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up tiny, look at how little, I'm just like creating like a wash, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just coming in here and I'm just dusting it over and letting it fall into the creases where it wants to. And I can come back in with a little bit stronger. I like, in this particular case, I like doing it into the wet on wet. Um, because then it just softens it as well. Mm -hmm. So I can start strong and work my way out. And that's one there. I'm doing it upside down, so if I'm, She's you know. I love the pink. Ah! It's so pretty, isn't it? It just kind of brings it to life. Here we go. And again, you can see how the more concentrated, this one is kind of into all those details. 
that's the water really helps. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that green again in this one and just tap it in. Can you see what I'm doing up here? Mm -hmm. So I'm just tapping it into all of those details. This one has a little bit of pink on there. And I'm not too, too worried. Like this is, don't freak out about it because uh, it's art, right? It's fluid. Loving it. Okay, how are we doing? How are we doing? Okay. Um, do I have all the rose bits, I think? It's hard to see what's roses and what's um, I think so. Because I'm looking at it upside down. So now I'm just going to tuck into some of this green. And I still I'm using the same brush and I'm totally happy to get a little bit of of um, pink in there if it does. Not too worried about that at all. And there we go. Into all that detail. And again, some pieces I'm going right over bits of rows. It's okay. Look, let's just add little bits in here. So it's going to soften. I'm going to get a little bit more of that green and just tuck it in and weave it. That was a little bit strong, but watch what's going to happen. <laughs> this is, oops, wrong one. If I just tuck a little bit of water on my brush even, and I can flood that off. Okay, a little bit green. A little bit green. There, there we go. go. Let's wipe this. Okay. So I'm going to hit this with just a little bit of um, air so that I can dry that off. It's like a beautiful wedding And cake. then I'm going to just kind of give it a slight wash with that original color. Okay. Make sure nothing blows away. Other thing we need to do, there we go, is our little butterfly. That's our butterfly. So I think I want him nestling right in here, somewhere in there. And um, I should have brought up the hot glue gun. Um, oh, so we God. might not be able to glue it right away, but I'm going to hold it up so you can see what it's going to look like. But I thought we'd do him with a little bit of a pretty blue. So he doesn't have to be the same, same. Maybe. He needs so little paint. So you could use a butterfly. Anything, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the hummingbird from the new Dewdrop Pond would be really pretty as well, depending on the size of your antlers as well, what you want to get in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to paint the whole thing to start with. And then all those details will come together when I add some more color. Okay. So again, painting the whole thing. Aren't these molds amazing? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so much you can do with them. It almost looks like white chocolate right now. Goes with our wedding cake theme here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, maybe this is a wedding gift. You right? Know, you could put somebody's name on it. Or you totally could. Do the yeah. flowers in their color. You know, their right? wedding colors. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's our basic. I'm actually going to tuck slightly into that pink. And just bring some little bits of. Can you see it? Yeah. Without really, um, and it doesn't have to be perfect either, right? Because you could add a little gold gild to his wings, or a I know. I black think black I'm gonna add some black. I think because I wanna. I'm gonna blow dry him now. I okay. want to try and highlight all of those details. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing pretty good, aren't we? I'm impressed. Gotta say. All right. Look at how soft and whimsical that is. So pretty. But you know, butterflies often have a little pop of something, something. So we're going to get some black in there. And maybe later, because I love some guild, but I didn't bring it up today. So we are just going to. So I could just use my finger, even and just rub across the tops, right? It's probably the easiest option. See how those are highlighting? How that works. There you go. 
Another option would be using just a really flat brush and using the flat side of it so that you're not getting it everywhere and into all those details or into the grooves but just on the details. Okay. Is it coming alive? Mm -hmm. yeah. There we go. Although I think I do want to give him I want it I want that inside little part give to a be. Brush or? Yeah I'm gonna get a little brush. Oh, the details on these molds are so amazing. Okay, look at that. And then if I take a teeny little brush, I thought I had a really tiny one. Maybe I used it for something else. There we go. Okay, and if I, I'm going to just give his body here a little bit more black. And his antenna. You know, the detail parts is when I stop talking. Mm -hmm. Concentration. Right? Does anyone else see that too? I have kids that stick their tongue out <laughs> when, they're <laughs> when they're busy concentrating. I stop talking, which is, you know, for me. <laughs> My husband's like, really? Concentrate. Um, okay, so look at this. My hands are super goopy, but look at how pretty that's going to be on top of there. Beautiful. Oh, look. Oh, you yeah. can see it through the camera. Uh, yeah, butterfly looks great, Sandy says. Thank you. I am actually, now that I think of it, I am just going to give the back a quick touch of the paint as well because it's going to be seen from both sides realistically, at least a little bit. Holy moly. Who else has a problem with these FIFA bottles? First in, first out. Well, maybe. Almost. A little shift on the camera. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Right? Did you get it? Um, there's probably enough there. Okay. I can always come back later because I'm not actually going to be able to. No, we, we've mixed that color, but it's okay. Um, I'm not going to be able to actually glue him on right now because I forgot my hot glue gun. All right, so that's going to just set aside and dry. Okay. I'm going to set that one there. I need another wet wipe because, you know. If your hands are clean, are you really creating? I don't know. <laughs> I messy hands don't bother me. Okay, so I do want to come over this with a little bit of the um, really light sort of country gray color here. And again, I want it really watery. I'm going to add lots of water in there. And I'm going to have my wet wipe handy. And I'm just going to run over top of all of this and let it fall where it falls and tap it back okay so again it's just going into details right softening the whole thing i'm softening that pink sorry that who loves so the pink good you could eat it yeah. yeah wow there we go i can come in a little bit here as well and just and pull you're it all use together a image transfer we are wow. one more little step i know well, you have to use you have to use the bits, right? Mm -hmm. Can't leave them. Okay, so lots of detail is coming out when you just kind of add that secondary bit, right? It goes into the grooves, it shows the details, it highlights. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so this is just going to wait for us now. It's pretty much done. I'm just going to clean up my edges so that I can put my transfer down there. So I do want to make sure that it is dry. I'm just going to put a little piece of transfer down there. So I'm just going to, you know, my favorite thing, but it has to happen sometimes. There we go. So your image transfer is not going to stick if your paint or your piece is wet. You do want to make sure that it is fully dry and cool to the touch, okay? So there we go. And this is our little piece. Because he looks very French, I think. I don't know. So we thought Paris. And, and look at how, where's our little butterfly? Look. Kind of works together, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So basically, I'm going to turn it my way so I can get it as centered as possible. And so when you get your transfer, it has a backing sheet that it is stuck to. Um, you're going to take that off. You're going to line it up where you want it. 
I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to lay it down. So this is, it has a light stick to it. It's not super sticky, just a light one. And so it's going to stay there. I'm going to take one of my little sticks that comes with it to transfer on, and I'm just going to rub over top of it. So I'm transferring it from this carrier sheet onto my substrate. All right. And often you can catch, you can see it coming off, it gets a little bit cloudy, but that doesn't always happen. I'm not seeing that this time. So let's just see if we can. Lisa's just tuning in, and where did the antlers come from? Wow. <laughs> Carrie's office, she's yeah. had them forever. Um, but it's something that you could find at like a big box, like a Home Sense, or uh, I guess in the States would be TJ Maxx, something like that. So a big box store, oh, decor, like or yeah. Thrift. Yep, exactly. So they're kind of out and about there. Uh, Janine has like, what, 1,400 on her wall? <laughs> Beautiful ones like this, all white and pretty. Um, but yeah, they're, they're around. So can you see, Carrie, I've missed that little corner. And it will be noticeable on my piece. So I'm just gonna lay it right back down and go right back over it and make sure I've got it fully, fully attached. Let's just see if we got her. There we go. Okay. There. And I'm going to flip this over and give it just uh, making sure that all of those little edges are actually down on there. Just rubbing it back. Alrighty. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? So we could, I considered putting some of the um, little, little bits of this coming up. Um, but I think I'm actually happy with it like this. I think if this was smaller, um, more this size, then I could have had them coming up. I still might add them, you never know. But I'm gonna say this is pretty much done. And this is going to be on here. But I wanna show you when this is dry, okay? Um, then we're gonna come in and seal it. And I like the idea of a white wax. So that's why I did this one yesterday so that I can show you how that, again, transforms it. Stuff everywhere, hey? All right, so, boom, boom, boom. I want to bring out even more of those beautiful details. I could use um, a, a black wax or um, there's different glazes that could darken decrepit, I think is one that a lot of the, the um, IOD people use as well. Um, I'm just going to use a white wax. So I don't want to wax that one yet because it's still super soft. Tomorrow I can come in and wax it. If I were to go in with this stiff brush, what's going to happen is I'm going to totally obliterate all of that. I'm actually going to use this brush. Alrighty, so let's go in and get some wax on it and finish her up. So if I wanted this to be more grungy, I would use a dark wax, like a brown or a black wax. I love that it looks very French and so French country and so we're just going to go ahead with a white. Alrighty. Oh, you know what I didn't bring? Paper towel to wipe off. Wax on, wax off. I'm going to use a wet wipe. It'll do the job. Yeah, meh. I'm going to have some paper in the second drawer. Second drawer. Yeah. Yay, that'll work. Okay, you know, next time, <laughs> don't be like me. Be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set that there. We are going to dig into this wax. So because I have so much detail in here, I don't want a clump of wax on my brush. So I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and soft. And I'm we just going to... Nice work. Look at that, right? It's like I planned it. Didn't. So again, this is just softening again. I could have gone in with a dark wax and make it um, grungier, um, but this is, I don't know, I think it's so pretty. And I'm really making sure that I get into all of those details because that's the whole fun, celebrate them. Okay, I can do the whole piece. We can come back to that later. That's not what you're learning, but so now the wax is on there. Now I'm just going to take a lint-free <laughs> paper towel and just rub off the surface. So can you see, let's find one here. See this one here? 
and now I'm going to rub it off. So the detail, it's gone into all of that detail. Look at these leaves, right? So instead of just being flat, it's added so much dimension. That one turned out beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Even this one, right? You couldn't see those little details before until you add, oh, I'm getting a little bit of yeah, lint. Lint-free yeah. is better, but this is showing you how that's going to work. And tomorrow, when this is dry, I'm going to bring that white wax in just to soften again and to bring it um, all those little bits to life. So today, what have we done? Where is my piece? Behind you. There it is. Alrighty. So this is how it's going to hang. And we're going to have our sweet little butterfly nestled up here, right? So that'll get done. We will have a photo later going up on the page. But again, so we used the paint inlay melange. We used um, Juliet mold for our roses. And we used a wee piece of transfer from seed catalogs. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has inspired you to take something that you have hanging on your wall that just needs a refresh and make it beautiful because these products just are amazing. So um, again, if you like what you saw here, find a stockist near you because they're going to be your new best friend. Um, go to ironorchiddesigns.com Des Iron and, uh, and find a retailer where you live. So thank you for watching. Again, my name is Candace Clay and I work here at The Passionate Home in downtown Langley. And if you're ever in BC in the area, come hit us up. We'd love to see you. Thanks guys.